Maria, Mother of God, Redeemer, Our Lady of Montserrat, intercede for us when we're under attack. Yours were the seed that brushed Satan's head. You said yes when the angel appeared. So pray for us, Our Lady of Montserrat. So pray for us, Our Lady of Montserrat. of Montserrat here, we bring our sorrows to you, for us you never fail, our troubles you see us through, with your son you formed a bond, which serves us to adore, before thy face we need, knowing prayer is a cure, Mama Maria, Mother for Redeemer, Our Lady of Montserrat, intercede for us when we're under Yours were the seed that crossed Satan's head. You said yes when the angel appeared. So pray for us, Our Lady of Montserrat. So pray for us, Our Lady of Montserrat. You are God's gift to us, and magnificent is your shrine. Such a wondrous beauty. So heavenly, you intercede for us all When we truly request, when we pray from our hearts You are there at our behest Mama Maria, Mother for Redeemer Our Lady of Montserrat, intercede for us when we're under attack Yours were the seed that crushed Satan's head You said yes when the angel appeared so pray for us, Our Lady of Montserrat. So pray for us, Our Lady of Montserrat. You've been helping those in need since you were found in Spain. Brought here by mission priests over Tortuga, you reign. Glorious in your kindness, friend to the poor and Interceding on their behalf, leading them to be saved. Mama Maria, Mother for Redeemer, Our Lady of Montserrat, intercede for us when we're under attack. Yours were the seed that crushed Satan's head. You said yes when the angel appeared. So pray for us, Our Lady of Montserrat. So pray for us, Our Lady of Montserrat. Just like you, that we will go to heaven. So many miracles above for those of us who believe. We promise to honor you for blessings that we receive. Mama Maria, Mother for Redeemer, Our Lady of Montserrat, intercede for us when we under attack. Yours when you see that from Satan said, You said yes when the angel of Intercede for us when we're under attack. Yours when you see that brush Satan's head. You said yes when the angel appeared. So pray for us, Our Lady of Montserrat. So pray for us, Our Lady of Montserrat. So pray for us. So good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon, Father. It's good to see you here, especially with our team, Our Lady of Montserrat, our Mother of Mercy. I would like to thank especially His Lordship, Bishop Jason Gordon, for accepting this invitation. I'm sure this area is not unfamiliar to you. Bishop Jason Gordon is, of course, a Trini. You know that. But you know, in the Caribbean right now, we produce a lot of bishops. 
and um, Oli has been a priest for 24 years, March 17 this year, 1991, he was ordained. He has been a bishop now for four years since I went to his ordination also on the 21st of September, 2011. So let's thank him for his wonderful work. He has a lot on his hands. He's the bishop of Bridgetown, Barbados, but he's also the administrator of King's Tongue, St. Vincent and the Grenadines. You had to get a difference between King's Tongue and King's Tongue. But he knows the difference because in back and, back and forth between the two islands. So we thank you, your Lordship, for accepting our invitation and to come and celebrate our feast, Our Lady, with us today. In a very special way, also, we'd like to welcome the ambassador and his wife, gracing us with your presence. It's a great honor to have you. I'm not too sure if I, I say the name incorrectly. Monsieur Picard? Picard. C'est un plaisir. Yes. Vous avez rencontré une fois avec nous pour la célébration de Notre Dame de Montserrat. Merci. So I leave it in the hands now of His Lordship, Bishop Jason Gordon. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Well, it is wonderful to be here. Amen. I'm great to come to celebrate the Eucharist and to celebrate your great theme, Our Lady of Montserrat, Mother of Mercy. As we begin the celebration of Eucharist, the celebration of the most intimate way in which we and God can connect, we begin by knowing that God's mercy is always more than our human foolishness. Always more than whatever we have done to break the bond of love between God and us. And so we begin the Eucharist by asking forgiveness and by praying for mercy, as we say. I confess to Almighty God, God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done, and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault, therefore I ask the Blessed Mary of a Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, may he forgive us all of our sins, and bring us an everlasting life. Amen.
only begotten son as he hung upon the cross chose the blessed virgin mary his mother to be our mother also grant we pray that with her loving help your church may more faithfully day by day and exalting in the holiness of her children may draw to her embrace all the families of the peoples through our lord jesus christ your son who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the holy spirit one God forever and ever. Amen. The first reading, a reading from the Acts of the Apostles. The next Sabbath, almost the whole town of Antioch assembled to hear the word of God. When they saw the crowds, the Jews, prompted by jealousy, used blasphemies and contradicted everything Paul said. Then Paul and Barnabas spoke out boldly. We had to proclaim the word of God to you first, but since you have rejected it, since you do not think yourselves worthy of eternal life, we must turn to the pagans. For this is what the Lord commanded us to do when he said, I have made you a light for the nations, so that my salvation may reach the ends of the earth. It made the pagans very happy to hear this, and they thanked the Lord for his message. All who were destined for eternal life became believers. Thus, the word of the Lord spread through the whole countryside. But the Jews worked upon some of the devout women of the upper classes and the leading men of the city and persuaded them to turn against Paul and Barnabas and expel them from their territory. So they shook the dust from their feet in defiance and went off to Iconium. But the disciples were filled with joy and the Holy Spirit. The word of the Lord. Your response? All of the ends of the earth have seen the salvation of our God. Show. 
words remember this truth and love for the house of Israel. All the ends of the earth have seen the salvation of our God. All of the ends of the earth have seen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. The angel Gabriel was sent by God <laughs> to a tongue in Galilee called Nazareth to a virgin betrothed to a man named Joseph of the house of David. And the virgin's name was Mary. He went in and said to her, Rejoice, so highly favored. The Lord is with you. She was deeply disturbed by these words and asked herself what this greeting could mean. But the angel said to her, Mary, do not be afraid. You have won God's favor. Listen. You are to conceive and bear a son, and you must name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his ancestor David, he will rule over the house of Jacob forever, and his reign will have no end. Mary said to the angel, But how can this come about, 
since I am a virgin. The Holy Spirit will come upon you, the angel answered, and the power of the Most High will cover you with its shadow. And so the child will be holy and will be called Son of God. Know this too. Your kinswoman Elizabeth has in her old age herself conceived a son. And she whom people called a baron is now in her sixth month for nothing is impossible to God. I am the handmaid of the Lord, said Mary. Let what you have said be done to me. And the angel left her. The Gospel of the Lord. You saw how the deacon jumped when the bird arrived at the command of the text. You all saw how he jumped, huh? You could imagine if it was a real life angel that just appeared in front of him. <laughs> it's here again. You could imagine if it was a real life agent, he wouldn't have jumped, he would have been skittling out of this, out of this church. He would have been in toes all down the road. They would have seen a deacon running. <laughs> we take this text so lightly because we have heard it so often. And yet the text has profound meaning for us. And our deliberation today on the theme, Our Lady of Montserrat, Mother of... You know... I have heard people speak of Mary as if somehow Mary is the mercy and God is the bad one. You all, you all have heard that? As if somehow God have to, Mary has to hold back God's hand from vengeance for us. And, and she begging on our behalf and poor God want to spew out all kind of foolishness on us. You all have ever heard that version? Huh? Well, that can't be the God of Jesus Christ. Because the God of Jesus Christ is the God of mercy. Because Jesus is mercy. If Mary is a mother of mercy, it's because she's the mother of Jesus Christ. It is because she has a son. And that son might as well have been called mercy, as well as he was called Jesus. Because everything that he lived and everything that he is, is mercy. And everything that he shows forth to the world is mercy. Mercy is when you receive forgiveness that you didn't deserve. Mercy is when you have been forgiven a debt that you could not repay. Mercy is when you know that what you deserve is not what you have received. Because what you deserved was such that you could not see a way out. And what you received is such that you can't wipe the smile off your face. You all know what I'm talking about? Many people don't understand our affection for Mary. And they believe somehow that we are trying to replace Mary with, or God with Mary and put Mary in the place that God should be in. And that really says that they really just don't get it. They just don't understand to start with, they don't understand the scripture. And they don't understand the tradition. When God sent the angel to Mary, you know every time God ap appears, the first thing God says is, don't be afraid. With good reason, eh? With very good reason. I don't know about you, but if an angel came to me, I, I'm not sure I, what my reaction would be. Do not be afraid. 
When, when the angel came to Mary and said, you are to conceive a bear son, Mary, a young woman at the time, a virgin, a woman who is betrothed, but not yet married, a woman who is young in age, and like every young woman of her day, wondering when the Messiah would come and how this Messiah would come. And when Mary is asked the question, that you will you conceive and bear a son and it is a question because you see salvation history was closed down by an answer and the answer came from Eve who said I will not serve and because Eve said no God will never impose upon us his plan of salvation his plan for our intimate union between God and ourselves where they walked in the cool of the evening and they lived with God in this intimacy that they experienced and this was God's plan for the whole of the humanity and Adam and Eve they said no and closed off paradise and the intimacy that God intended to open back paradise and to open back the intimacy a human being has to say yes because God will never impose upon us his plan because he gave us free will. God will only ever propose to us and he will never impose. Because he has given free will, although it is for our best that we say yes to him, although it is for our best that we live in intimacy with God, God will never impose it upon us. And God will always ask the question, Will you conceive? Will you bear a son? Will you say yes to the divine plan? And the question was asked of the angel, by the angel to Mary. And St. Bernard of Clairvaux, a mystic and a father of the church, says, when the question was posed to Mary, the whole creation went into hushed silence, waiting on the answer of Mary. And not just the creation. But the whole heavenly court in hushed silence is waiting on Mary's response. Adam and Eve who had been banished from paradise sit waiting to see if this could be the moment of their redemption. And all the just from Abel up until the last who had lived are all standing and waiting on this answer from this virgin in Nazareth. And God himself is waiting. Let it be done unto me according to thy word. And then the angel left her. The question posed to Mary is the most important question in salvation history. And had Mary said no, well, we wouldn't be here today. <laughs> had Mary said no, as Eve said no, the whole history of the world would be different. The whole history of the world would be different. Mary's yes opens back salvation history. Mary's yes allows Christ to come into the world. Mary's yes allows God to do what God wants to do. Mary's yes allows the Savior to be born. Mary's yes allows salvation to come. Mary's yes allows the redemption of all the just from Abel right up until the last. Mary's yes allows those who had lived without knowing God to be open to salvation. One no closed salvation history. One yes opens it back up. To understand the significance of Mary is to understand that this woman, this virgin of Nazareth, has the power to say yes and no, and in this power to open salvation history or to close it off again. Such power, such power put into a young woman's hands, such power wielded with such grace and humility. To understand Mary is to understand her role in salvation history and it is to understand that this yes opens for us a way when we say the hail mary and many people think that we pray to mary when we say the hail mary we're actually reciting two pieces of scripture and we're also asking mary's intercession 
We start the Hail Mary by saying, And who said that? Oh, so it's scripture then. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Listen to that again. Hail Mary, When Mary is described as full of grace, what does that mean? What does that mean? Full of grace. What does that She's not yet pregnant with Jesus, eh? This is before the question is posed. She's not yet pregnant. She hasn't yet conceived the son. So it's, we can't be referring to her having conceived Jesus. This is before the conception. The angel says that Mary is? What does that mean? What does that mean? Aha. Uh -huh. Aha. Uh -huh. What does it mean? Because if she's full of grace, brothers and sisters, and we know all the children of Eve, all the children of Eve, without exception, could not be described as full of grace. Because they had all lost the favor of God. Every single one. For Mary to be full of grace means that, that Mary has opened up a new line in salvation history. As Eve... Our mother who says no, Mary, our new mother, the new Eve who says yes. There is a new line and that's why we believe that Mary is conceived without original sin. Because Mary was full of grace before she conceived Jesus. She was full of favor of God before Jesus was conceived. And that's why the church teaches Mary as conceived without original sin. Because Mary has been full of grace before the angel comes. And what does Elizabeth say? Of all women, of all women, you are the most blessed. And so we have the second half of that prayer. And what does it say? And of all women, Mary is the most blessed. How come Mary is the most blessed? Because of all women, Mary is the one who says yes. And more blessed than Eve. Who says no more blessed than every woman who had ever lived why because Mary is the one who says yes to God and we see another scripture text where God says or Jesus in describing Mary's blessings she's not blessed because she bore a child and suckled the child blessed rather is she because she heard the word of God and put it into practice because she said yes and she lived her life by that yes Mary and her role in salvation history as the mother of mercy opens for us because Mary's yes means that you and I now have two mothers. And we must choose between them. I don't know about you, but far too often I am the child of the wrong mother. <laughs> far too often I say no to God. Far too often. To be a child of Mary is to say yes to God. To be a child of Mary is to say yes to mercy and to become mercy and to incarnate mercy in your life. Because to say to yes to, to Mary is to say yes to Jesus Christ coming into your life, to transform your life into the image of God. And as we say yes to Mary, as we become Mary's children, what we become is this channel of grace that God has begun that says yes in a new lineage. And so for Mary and this new lineage of yes, you and I have been invited to be those who say yes to God, yes to grace, yes to mercy, yes to God's will in our life. It's not those who say, Lord, Lord, but those who? I hear you. Those who do. And who is the one who did the will of the Father in the most pure and most practical sense. Who is that one? Mary. Oh, is Mary? Oh, oh, Mary. But Mary's role in salvation history isn't just because she conceived a child. It's because she said yes. Simeon would say, and a sword will pierce your own soul too, so that the secret thoughts of many may be laid bare. Speaking about the broken heart of Mary, what we will call the immaculate heart of Mary. And any of you mothers know, when you see your children suffering, what happens to your heart? I hear you. 
You say good for them, they give me enough precious time, they take some now themselves. You ever say that? Eh? Serious? Never? No? And if we whose hearts are so impure, so tainted by our loyalties to so many different things, know how to really love our children when we see them suffer, can you imagine the pain of Mary's heart? When she sees her son on the cross, can you imagine that pain? Can you imagine the brokenness of that heart as she tries to understand the mysteries of God? Was it really the angel who spoke to me? Did I have an, a hallucination? Did I go wrong somewhere? Did something go wrong? Did I not hear clearly that he is the Christ? How can he be on the cross and be the Christ? Can you imagine the confusion and the pain in Mary's heart? Faith, brothers and sisters, is only faith when it is pushed to the limits. We want faith without any problems whatsoever, not so? And with no questions and with complete clarity and light, not so? Faith is only faith when we are pushed to the limits. When we reach to the limits of faith, then we have to believe what God says. Mary was pushed way beyond the limits. And it is in the crucifixion that Jesus says, Mother, behold, Son. And the scripture says, And he made a place in his home for her from that day. Who was it? Addressed to? True. True. Eh, eh. You must have a different Bible than me. Because no matter how I look in the Bible, I can't find John name there. The scripture says, And standing near the cross was his mother, Mary, and the other woman, and the disciple that Jesus loved. The beloved disciple. The disciple that Jesus loved. He was never named as John. We assume as John. That is our fault. That disciple appears several times in the text. Because he appears on table. As one of the three upon table. He appears at the last supper. Leaning against the breast of Jesus. He appears in the, in the garden of Gethsemane. The beloved disciple. He also appears when he runs with Peter to the tomb and reaches there first because love impels him and he reaches before authority, Peter. But he waits and allows Peter to go in. He also appears when they catch the big set of fish. He is the one who says to Peter, it is the Lord. And it is Peter who jumps out of the boat and goes. He's only known as the beloved disciple. That's all he's known as. The disciple Jesus loves. You go back to your, to your scripture. I know you don't believe me, no? You go back to your scripture today and you go look and see. If you find it, say, John there, you call me and let me know. I want to know who print your Bible. This is not a person. This is an office. I am the bishop of Bridgetown. I am the bishop of Kingstown. Before me, there were other bishops. And after me, there will be other bishops. Charles Jason Gordon happens to be the bishop right now. In Kingstown and in Bridgetown. That happens to be. Because it's an office. It's not a person. The beloved disciple is an office. It's not a person. And it's in his capacity. In this office of the beloved disciple. That John in his gospel. Opens up for us. That Mary is entrusted to the beloved disciple. And the, the, the beloved disciple is entrusted to Mary. I ain't know about you you know. I ain't know about you. But if it's one thing I want to be, is a beloved disciple. If it's one thing I want to be, is a beloved disciple. Not all the disciples are beloved disciples because not all of the disciples arrived at the foot of Calvary. Not all the disciples made it through to the cross. Not all of the disciples were able to contain these mysteries in their heart. Not all of the disciples were able to stand at the foot of the cross and take the broken pain of this body that was being battered and shattered. Not all of them were. But this one was. And because he was standing there at the foot of the cross, entrusted into his hands is what is most precious to Jesus. His mother, son, Behold your mother. And the question is right now, 
It's only the question of the day. Do you too want to stand in this office of beloved disciple? Or do you want like Peter to run away from the cross? Because we in this time want to run from the cross. We want to run from the suffering. We want to run from the persecution. We want to run from the difficulty that there is of proclaiming the good news of Jesus Christ. We want to run and hide like the other disciples. It is only the beloved that came to Calvary and stood at Calvary and he received the prize of all prizes. To stand as a beloved disciple is to stand in the most intimate union with Jesus Christ. It is to stand in that place of intimacy that we have been created for. We were created to know the love of God and to be able to open the whole of our life to this love, to this mercy. This is why we were created. We were created to know the intimacy with God. And in a very special way, this has been entrusted to the beloved disciple. You can be a beloved disciple. If you would. If you would. If you would. Say yes. And if you would, make a place for her in your heart. If you would make a place for her in your home. If you'd make a place for her in your life. This is not something we invented as Catholics. This is something that Jesus entrusted to us and to his church. And if people, others who believe in our Bible, don't understand the full truth of the Bible and the full truth of salvation history, because they believe that God can use such a sacred vessel and throw it away, as if God is used to text things and just throw them away. God is not a throwaway God. And what he has used and called most blessed, he cannot throw away. And what he has entrusted his beloved disciple, he cannot throw away. And today, God asks of you one question. Will you make a place for her in your heart? Amen. Amen. Let us stand and bring our needs, our intentions, our requests to our God who always hears the cries of his people. Gracious God and Father, we come before your throne of grace and mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, and through the intercession of our Blessed Mother. And we bring our church before you, O oh God. And we pray that even now, as our church is a beacon to your word, we pray that your church will continue to be renewed by the Holy Spirit. So in a world drenched in darkness, our church can be a sign of hope. Lord, hear us. We pray for world peace and we pray for our nation. We pray that through the intercession of our Blessed Mother, that our world and our nation will become a safe place to be. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We bring before you, O Blessed Mother, and we ask you that the graces of the Nazareth experience be with every family member here that indeed every family will be a representation of the Holy Family. Lord, hear us. Lord, gracious be here. We pray for our young people, that indeed that through the midst of all their challenges, that your Blessed Mother will cover them with your mantle of divine protection and providence. Lord, hear us. Lord, gracious be here. We pray for those who are sick, those who are shut-ins, those who are in prison, those who do not know you. 
Oh, Blessed Mother, we ask you to bring the spirit of comfort, to, to comfort your people and to draw them closer to your Son, Jesus Christ. Lord, hear us. We pray for all of us gathered here today, those of us who have heard the word of God, that indeed that the graces of this time of celebration, celebrating your mother, Lord Jesus, that we too will say yes, and that during this time our faith will be deepened, and that we will remain faithful to your call and to our call. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Together we say the Hail Mary. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst the men, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen.
brothers and sisters that your sacrifice and mine may be pleasing and acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May you accept the sacrifice from your hands for the grace and glory of his name for our good and the good of all his holy church. Receive our offerings O Lord and transform them into the mystery of salvation so that by its power we may be set aflame with the charity of the Virgin Mary mother of the church and with her may be united more closely to the work of redemption through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. And to proclaim your greatness with due praise as we honor the blessed Virgin Mary, receiving your word in her immaculate heart. She was found worthy to conceive him in her virgin's womb. And giving birth to the Creator, she nurtured the beginnings of the church.
standing beside the cross. She received the testament of divine love and took to herself as sons and daughters all those who, by the death of Christ, are born to heavenly life. As the apostles awaited the Spirit, you had promised. She joined her supplication with the prayers of the disciples and so became the pattern of the church at prayer. Raised to the glory of heaven, she accompanies your pilgrim church with a mother's love and watches in kindness over the church homeward step until the Lord's day shall come in glorious splendor. And so with all the angels and saints, we praise you as without end we acclaim you. And all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and the working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and you make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, to graciously make holy these gifts that we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. 
at whose command we celebrate these sacred mysteries. For on the night that he was betrayed, he himself took bread. And giving thanks, he said the blessing. He broke the bread. He gave it to his disciples saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And giving thanks, he said the blessing. He gave the chalice to his disciples saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is a chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. as we celebrate the memorial of his saving passion of your son and his wondrous resurrection and the ascension into heaven and as we look forward to his second coming we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice look we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with the Holy Spirit may become one body, one Spirit in Christ. May He make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, the blessed Saint Joseph, with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant, Francis of Pope, Joseph of Bishop, Robert of City Bishop, Bishop Jason, the order of bishops or the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O Merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world, to our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you that they are passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ, O Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, 
Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our day, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord Jesus be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb.
Let us pray. Having received the pledge of redemption and of life, we humbly pray, O Lord, 
that with the blessed Virgin Mary's motherly help, your church may teach all nations by proclaiming the gospel and through the grace of the outpouring of the Spirit, fill the whole earth through Christ our Lord. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. His Excellency, A.D. Picard, Ambassador Extraordinary and Plenipotentiary of the Republic of France, and Madame Picard, His Lordship, Bishop Jason Gordon, Bishop of Barbados, St. Vincent and the Grenadines, Father Alan Hall, Parish Priest of Tortuga Parish, Deacon Simon and Mrs. Roster, invited guests, ladies and gentlemen. It is in my capacity as the president of the Shrine Committee of Our Lady of Montserrat and on behalf of our parish priest, Father Elon Hall and the Tortuga community that I welcome you to our fifth annual afternoon, with our lady, afternoon tea with Our Lady celebrations. In a very special way, I would like to thank His Lordship Bishop Jason Gordon, who has traveled from Barbados via St. Vincent to be with us today. I hope Bishop Jason will forgive me for telling you all this story. In August 2014, I had the privilege of attending the lunch hour mass at the St. Paul's Cathedral in Bridgetown to celebrate the Feast of the Assumption of Our Lady. At that Mass, His Lordship preached on Our Lo Lady's role in salvation history and her significance in our lives as queen and mother. I was riveted. At the end of his sermon, an old St. Lucian woman did what all of us present wanted to do but lacked the courage. She rose to her feet and defying the rules of the liturgy, applauded loudly. At that moment, struggling between bursting into tears at the beauty of his words and the description of our mother and forcing myself to remember the content of the sermon, I made a mental note to invite him to be our chief celebrant at this annual event to celebrate Our Lady. <clears throat> Bishop Jason, without hesitation, said yes to our invitation. And, was, and as was to be expected, he did not disappoint us. Amen. Today, I invite you to defy the rules of the liturgy. Get to your feet, stand and applaud Bishop Jason. Bishop Jason, thank you so very much for being here and for your inspiring words. At this time, I would like to invite Antoinette Lewis, our hard-working secretary, to present his lordship with a small token of our love and appreciation. Sincere thanks must also be given to His Excellency Ambassador Picard and Madame Picard, whom, upon hearing of our celebration, sent us word that they'll be attending. And what an honor and a privilege it is to have you both with us. Especially given the long-standing partnership that we've enjoyed with the French Embassy 
in the restoration of our beautiful stained glass windows in Toulouse in 2004. His Excellency and Mrs. Picard, Madame Picard, are new to Trinidad and Tobago, February of this year, arriving, um, I'm not January, February. We welcome you not only to Tortuga, but our beautiful twin island state, and we wish you a fruitful, productive, and enjoyable stay with us. At, at this time, I would like to ask Father to present Madame Picard with a gift from one of the architects in our area, Paul Janos, whose wife is present and who is a parishioner here. It is a beautiful piece of art that we want you to remember us by. As is usual, our partner Trinity TV has come to celebrate with us and to record our Mass, which will be shown tonight at 7 p.m. on Channel 10, Trinity TV. Trinity TV has been... 4.30, so thank you. Not, four, not 7 p.m., 4.30. You all will be at tea. <laughs> Trinity TV has been an evangelical force in our midst, faithfully reflecting our Catholic culture and an identity to the world. It is such an honor and a privilege to work with this team of energetic and excellent professionals. In a special way, I'd like to thank Lisa Bajan of Trinity TV for her unstinting support and the gymnastics that she does to ensure that her team can support us whenever we need them. At this year's tea, we have 22 door prizes, which were generously donated by our very kind sponsors, Angostura, Unilever, House of Jaipur, and Mailing. We have received other help from SM Jalil, the Grimaldos family, who sponsored the Venezuelan artists who will be entertaining us today, and grannies and boomerang caterers. To all of our faithful sponsors, we send prayers of gratitude for success of your businesses and your lives, and for safety and peace for your loved ones. I would like to thank you, our faithful pilgrims and visitors, for your annual support. Year after year, you come from every corner of the Republic, bringing good wishes, your friendship, and your fidelity to our mother and her son. Every year, we are overwhelmed by your love and generosity, and for this, we thank you. Now, while Father Elon is a member of the Shrine Committee, and I'm speaking on behalf of the Shrine Committee, I want to say that Father Elon is a very good shepherd. I was wondering if I should say he's a good little shepherd or a little good shepherd. <laughs> but he's both. And so, Father, we want to say we love you dearly. We thank you for your spiritual support and your love. And we hope you will continue to show us these qualities for a very, very, very long time. Nobody wants you to move now. Allow me to close this segment with a very short story. In 2011, our first day of hosting this event, we focused entirely on Our Lady and getting the word out to the Archdiocese that a beautiful shrine existed in the Montserrat Hills in the Central Range, that we could testify to her powerful intercession, and that everyone who came here left feeling different, touched by the beauty and the peacefulness of the place. In 2012, the second year, we did a hymn to Our Lady competition, and the eight choirs of our parish composed and sang hymns to Our Lady of Montserrat. The years 2013 and 14 were dedicated to honoring our Spanish and French spiritual ancestors, respectively. This year, 2015, the theme of our celebration is Our Lady of Montserrat, Mother of Mercy. 
In a way, the celebrations of this year have brought us back to our spiritual baseline, focusing on Our Lady and her son, Jesus. And we arrived at this place in a very interesting and intriguing way. Since the restoration of the 200-year-old statue in 2013, we have been working with Mailing, the fashion designer in Port of Spain, to accumulate over time a wardrobe for Our Lady that reflects the liturgical seasons. This is the Easter special. <laughs> As the church's seasons change, so too do Our Lady and Jesus' clothes. Every time we change the garments signaling the onset of a new liturgical season, I would take a picture and send it to Mailing for her portfolio. On the evening of Ash Wednesday 2015, a few members of the Shrine Committee and myself went to Our Lady's Chapel to change the ordinary time garments into those signifying the Lenten season. After Our Lady and Jesus were placed under glass back onto the throne, I attempted to take a picture for mailing as I usually do. As it was nighttime and the overhead lights were on in Our Lady's room, the picture was too bright and Our Lady and Jesus were obscured. I asked Glenn Ghani, one of our members, our technical director, to switch off the lights overhead so that I could get a picture with less light on it. As the lights went off, we all stood in complete darkness, the type of darkness that is only possible in a far off country area like Tortuga. I could see nothing. A little disoriented by the darkness, I pointed my phone in the general direction of Our Lady and Jesus, and I clicked. The picture that came out is on the prayer card which you were given as you entered the church. In the picture, we see a bright light emanating from Jesus' heart. What appears to be a star over Our Lady's crown and Our Lady staring directly into the camera. As the Shrine Committee journeyed through Lent contemplating this picture and what it means to us as a team, we realized that it refocused us on Jesus and Our Lady. Some persons see the sacred heart of Jesus, some see the divine mercy, and some see the reflection of the flash on the glass. Whatever you see is really a personal spiritual experience. What is important is that the picture calls us to look and look again and to seek and to contemplate the heart of Jesus and the loving gaze of our mother. It forces us to place our eyes on Jesus and his mother and to find whatever message the Holy Spirit chooses to uncover within us. Finally, on March 25th, the Feast of the Annunciation, the Shrine Committee met on retreat at St. Catherine's Well in Grand Coover and used the picture as the centerpiece around which the retreat was themed. The response to our meditation on the picture is the prayer at the back of the card. Please join me now as we say, Our Lady of Montserrat, Patroness of Tortuga, Queen of Heaven and Mother of Christ, we, your loving children, cry to you for help. May the light of truth, peace, and mercy flowing from the heart of Jesus remove from our hearts all darkness and replace it with the fire of his love. Make us his powerful lights in this world, O Queen of Intercessors, to your shrine visitors abound, seeking solace, seeking miracles. Teach us to pray. Guide us along the way. Help us to become like your son. O Lady of Montserrat, pray for us. I thank you. It's been a privilege to be here, privilege to share with you, and to celebrate this wonderful church, and of course, Our Lady and Her Son. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. 
May Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your lives. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Virgin was fruitful, virgin was prudent, virgin was prudent.